Hey everyone, this is Peter Parsley. I'm WD Conine. And we open the vault tonight to bring you Executive Decision. And the level of threat. It's March 2013. Olympus Has Fallen comes out, which stars Gerard Butler and Morgan Freeman, about the White House being taken over by terrorists, and there's only one man who can stop them. Jesus. Gerard Butler. So, with such a high-adrenaline political action film coming out, we wanted to take a look back at a movie from the 90s that was also another high-octane political action thriller. Executive Decision stars Kurt Russell, sort of Steven Seagal, Halle Berry, and John Leguizamo. What's this movie about, Conan? Well, you see, there's some radical terrorists who decide that, well, they need a plane, and there may be some bombs or some gas on board. We need to do something about it. So the U.S. government gets a crack team of Seagull expert troops and an analyst played by Kurt Russell to go in to invade and stop these terrorists. That's right, and Kurt Russell is only supposed to be there kind of as an advisor while they're on the way up to get on board the aircraft. So, Peter, what did you like about Executive Decision? There's a lot I liked about Executive Decision, Conan. Uh, I think that this is one of those rare movies where they, the writer uh, and the director actually treat the audience as if uh, you're not an idiot. And how nice is that for a break? You can tell that whoever wrote this was very well versed in international affairs and they put a lot of that into the script. We see a lot of things going on for within the first 45 minutes that aren't necessarily action heavy, but it's all tension and build up. And then once they get on the plane, it doesn't necessarily turn into some action romp. It's just a lot of very well executed thrills. It's so well made. And I think that's the thing, I remember, uh, when you had watched it, I, I talked to you about how this almost reminded me of something that Christopher Nolan would do, yeah. where it's very grounded in reality. It's, it's one of those action films that never goes too overboard with itself. It's not very cartoonish. Um, it's just one of those movies where by the time you go into it maybe thinking it's going to be a run-of-the-mill action flick, and by the end of the movie... You are just absolutely blown away by the experience you've had. There's a lot of things aside from that that I really liked. Uh, a lot of people dislike the fact that Steven Seagal actually ends up dying 45 minutes into the movie, and th they marketed this film to where you were going to think that he's going to be in the entire like two-hour film. And they pulled a, a psycho and a, and a scream. You know, you put one of your main actors right up there, and oh. He's gone. And this is not a spoiler, by the way. I was told that he was out of the picture within the first 30, 45 minutes, and I love this film. This is one of those movies where everything is motivated. And even in the moments of tension, we were just watching a clip from it earlier, even in moments that typically they would just play it straight, you're already in a tense moment, and then something really wild happens. Oh my god, this, ha this is the last thing that's supposed to take place, and then they have to deal with it. And I... I love that. What did you like about the movie? A lot. Mm -hmm. But I think one of one of the things that really surprised me about going into it is that while it is an action movie, you could debate whether this is action or thriller and yeah. it is so character centric. It's not just it's not just seeing how this ev event would play out, but you really are following Kurt Russell's care Richter on a truly life-changing adventure. You have lots of different defined characters in this. They all have different views, and you actually see a lot of understanding, a lot of respect, and a lot of maturity. Yeah, we should mention that Kurt Russell's character is not a John McClane, Snake Plissken, John Rambo yeah. type figure. He's just uh, working for a think tank. He could be any guy in one of those offices, and he just uses his knowledge uh, the best he can, and they apply it throughout the movie. And I think that's what makes it really interesting, because I, I remember like you told me, you're like, I've never seen a character like this before. Usually the main guy is the one-man army, I'm going to go back and blow all the bad guys away type, which is fine. <laughs> but in this situation, they flip that upside down and they give you a guy who should be in an office uh, fixing the printer jam. <laughs> of course, he ends up on the plane. Everything that shouldn't happen happens in this movie. Wrong time, wrong play. And, and on top of that, though, it always builds it up it's, and it, it cranks it up just a little bit more. 
And that's what makes it so um, edgy your seat. I mean, they use that as a cliche, but I think you were saying you were actually like in front of the TV, like during one of the I, scenes involving I, I the mean, bomb. We'll get to like, it when I when I explain one of my fav favorite parts. But yes, there there is there is a moment when I was literally like off my chair, screaming at the TV in just tense stress build up um, having people inside my house come inside ask what the hell's going on it's <laughs> the film can grip me and what you were saying about kurt russell's character it's just it's fantastic because it's not just we have this analyst who can suddenly pick up a machine gun and go with it no he, he's yeah. realistic in everything he does in the film like there's nothing you're like an analyst couldn't do that or like this guy couldn't do that so peter what did you not like about Executive Decision? Um, you know, it's really hard because I feel like this movie was the best it could be. Although I do have a complaint with one of the re-releases of, of this oh. movie. The, on the VHS and the DVD, you, you're watching the entire film in the way it was meant to be presented to you. When, they, when Warner Brothers released the Blu-ray, they took out a few scenes from the movie because they were they were worried about political correctness. There's a scene where the main villain has his hand on the Quran, and uh, there's another scene where he's like praying. But apparently, they were worried about offending people who were never going to watch this movie. No, but really, there's no reason to have cut these scenes from the film. I don't give a shit about political correctness, and action films don't either. Like, it's not like they were demonizing or like making these guys out to be cartoons. It's played very well. I mean. Yes, yeah, it's played straight. And they are the bad guys, but they even show like some sympathy towards a few of them who didn't even fully know what's going on. And it's like this isn't in this isn't demonizing these people at all. I guess the big difference too is don't the, the bad guys in this movie definitely have weapons and some high tech uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, pieces of uh, uh, stuff. So Conine, what did you dislike about the movie? It's really hard to point a finger at something and say, like, that wasn't very well done. Like, I guess, and this didn't even bother me during the film, but if I was to take a really close examination, like, maybe make it a teensy bit better, is that the film does set up this kind of unorthodox villain when, where, like, the climax isn't quite the hero facing off against the main villain. And when they do, it's really quick because that's not really the point. I really thought like that, like it was going to end on that note that it would be this big kind of cla classic clash of your your hero and your villain. And it's mm -hmm. not really that, but really that's not even like a real con or a problem with the film. You're not gonna be thinking about it. Basically, we like this movie so much that <laughs> we we don't find too many flaws with it, and I'm sure you could. Another thing we should point out is just how underrated this movie is. Yes. How many people do you know that have actually seen Executive Decision? There's you? Mm-hmm. I like to think I know me. Sure. Mm. Executive Decision is certainly a movie that's worth your time. It is definitely the kind of film that can get a lot of repeat viewings. And even yeah. though this movie takes 45 minutes to really get to the plane and, and have yeah. everything going. That's not a bad thing. Not in this case. You know, one of the movies that I always thought when I rewatch it and I'm like, oh, come on, get to, is uh, Rambo 3. Yeah. Okay. And in Rambo 3, it takes 45 minutes, look at your DVD or Blu ray player, for the action to kick off and for the movie to begin. And it's not like Rambo 3 needs 45 <laughs> minutes. First Blood Part 2 is a superior film. How long does that take to get going? Like 15 minutes? But it happens right away. But Peter, you see, Rambo 3 was. What's his epic? So, Peter, what would you rate Executive Decision? I've thought about this. I want to put it at an 8 out of 10. Yes, this is a great film. But part of me, the more we talk about it and when I revisit this movie, I want to go up to like 8.5. And, and I don't know. <laughs> it's definitely an 8 range picture. What about you? I'm going to have the same rating again, but... I do want to give it an 8. I don't know if I'm quite there yet, but honestly, it's a film every single time I watch it. I like it that much more, and I keep liking it more, so it might escalate to that. But at this moment, 
it's a great film through and through. It's under, it's underrated. And honestly, if you're a fan of action, if you're a fan of thrillers, if you're just a fan of, well, creepy foreign policy predictions, you should see it. We're going to one day have the conversation as to why this movie is not a 9 out of 10. And let me tell you why we're going to end up having that conversation. Because one of these days, you or I are going to bring up this this concept <laughs> that, like, what's wrong with the movie? We, we, we kind of went over it already, and then we're going to go, well, why is it not a 9? Why is it not a 10? Yeah, and just, why just because is it we, not one of our favorite films? I would go as far as to say that Executive Decision is one of the most underrated films of the past three decades. I'm Peter Parsley. I'm W.D. Conine. And tonight we close the vault. Until next time. I have a message for the American president. Knows no limits. I am in control of flight 343. Well, sir, I don't think this is about hostages. What are you talking about? A shipment of the nerve toxin DZ-5 was hijacked. Are you saying nerve gas is on board? Yes, sir, I am. You weak, pathetic fools! I've come for your soul!